Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is your friendly neighborhood knucklehead, and this is the Part-Time Artist Podcast. This is episode 175. It's Monday, February 19th. I think it's President's Day. There is some sort of holiday going on today. I don't know what it actually is. I forgot. Um, But anyway, we're back, and... um, Just a really quick reminder for everybody, at the end of this month, it is going to be the Black History Month radio show, so any artists of color, black artists out there um, that want your music on the radio show, shoot me an email, parttimeartistpodcast at gmail.com, and put in the subject that it's uh, the radio show for the 2024 Black History Month um yes aside from that there are my uh my affiliate links are in the bottom if you want to support the podcast um i have a new affiliate link and it's from visible i i just picked up visible when i uh i switched from t-mobile and it seems like a really affordable way to have cell phone coverage and data and stuff like that it's only like 20 25 bucks a month and if you use my code i think you get the first month completely free or something like that um and i also used my the cell phone that i own so if you own a cell phone already you don't even need to you could just download the e-sim card and you'll be good to go i didn't need to go to a store i didn't need to do anything um so that's a cool um affiliate link there that i just started and um the other ones of course mailchimp i use that for my email lists and things like that you can also build landing pages and cool shit with mailchimp uh that's a 30 dollar off code and then lastly distro kid distro kid is what i use to put all of my music on streaming services you can join today and get seven percent off of your purchase now aside from that i want to let you guys know that this weekend on saturday i played a gig with war park again for the first time in a while um i think we had a show a little i don't even remember when the last time the show we had was but anyway we're we we just started playing again and uh really really excited to get that back up and running i we came out with a new album we came out with um with this live in studio session with cart music that i've been saying over the past few weeks so if you're on the east coast check out cart underscore music if you want to get like a a studio session it's great to have for booking tours and, and and booking shows it shows what you really sound like live you know so it's a really good representation to have if you're an artist but we played a show on saturday at this spot in lancaster and what i want to let you guys know if you're having trouble booking in philadelphia this spot in lancaster is awesome it's called little mutants and the surrounding areas like west of philadelphia uh york lancaster uh redding uh even harrisburg like don't sleep on these places because chances are they're gonna treat you really well if you're if you're a touring artist and chances are they have a walk-in crowd because there might not be a ton of other things to do in that town and to me those things you know make for a cool music scene if stuff is happening and the spot in lancaster was a brewery they made all their own beer they treated us really well and um, they had a walk-in crowd and it's a brand new spot they've only been doing shows for a couple months so um if you go oh man i don't even have a website for them but it's it's little mutants i think the brewery company is called the mutator let me look this up really quick little mutants what is the website um it's little dot mutants on instagram and oh it's drink mutants.com <laughs> and uh the guys who own that club uh said to just shoot them an email it should be there in uh on drink mutants.com so that's my plug for them that was a really cool show it was a nice stage and uh they treated us really well so uh, we got more shows coming up for war park 
if you go to at war park music on Instagram and stuff like that, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to keep you guys in the loop of all the things that I'm learning as I'm booking tours, playing shows, things of that nature. Even though we had to drive Lancaster is about an hour and a half outside of Philadelphia. So it was a pretty good drive there and back, but honestly, like, those drives, I don't know how other people do it, but on some of those drives, we really get on the same page as a band, you know? When you have long drives and you're going on tour, it's almost impossible to not get tighter as a group because you're sitting there in the car talking. So if you're, you know, a band or an artist and you haven't really been on the road yet, I highly encourage you to take 2024 and to get yourself out there. Um, Even if it's just going to open mics, I've done that. I've grabbed my acoustic, I've grabbed my acoustic guitar and I've been on the road just playing at open mics. And you know what? I've sold merch. I've gotten donations. I've gotten people on the email list. Sometimes open mics were better than like real shows that I have booked. So don't sleep on that stuff. Get out there. Plan, plan something for yourself this year in 2024. Um, that's my message to you. All right, let's get into the show. I have with me a very, very special guest from the faraway lands of California, Los Angeles. I have with me G Houston. Thank you so much for coming (laughs) on the show. Appreciate you. Appreciate right. you for getting the name right, man. <laughs> it's almost like we talked about it for 20 minutes before we started rolling. No, I'm just kidding. But right. I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, are you from like born and raised in the L.A. area? I am born and raised in the IE Inland Empire, which is like an hour driving from Los Angeles, the city. Mm. Uh, I'm from Pomona, California, really. Pomona. But I'm just so used to telling people I'm from L.A. because nobody knows about Pomona, really. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. And all of these areas like surrounding LA, they all seem to have their own like <laughs> everybody like claims LA, but then when you're in LA, there's all of these different cities that are there. It's like, "Oh no, I'm in Culver City. Oh no, I'm in Santa Monica." It's yeah. like all that. And I was just like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> like all of this LA's huge. It's huge. And yeah. when I, I've been booking a tour and I've been looking at Boston and Boston is kind of like the same thing. Like they, they mm. have all of these different names for the same thing. I'm like, guys, you're, you're all Boston, like Alston. What, what is this? I don't like, I don't know, whatever, Charleston, yeah. whatever. Um, so anyway, I want to start you off with a fast five. All right. This is going to be this or that. All right. Don't think Word. too hard about this, but um, first thing. Because I know you're from LA, I want to know: hard shell or soft shell taco? Soft shell. Oh, how about iced For tea sure. or lemonade? Lemonade, got mm. to. How about a cloudy beach day or a sunny mountain day? Gotta go cloudy beach. Gotta go the, cloudy beach. I love the cloudy beach. Um, yeah. All right, now this one's a little bit of a hard hitter, but would you rather have a hundred thousand dollars today, or have a million dollars coming your way in ten years? I will take a hundred thousand today. Me for too. Sure. Ten for years? Sure. Who knows, man? Like you gotta wait ten years. Like yeah. the next ten years is just gonna be like agony. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like I feel like any like reasonable per- reasonable person would just start running up credit cards, but I can't do that. Like my anxiety, I can't do that. I can't. All right, last question, and this is the most important question: Usher or Alicia Keys? Got to pick one. Oh my god! Um, all right, I just sang Usher way more in the shower. To yeah. be honest, so. This is something go that, ash. like, I was looking at the Super Bowl, and in uh, the back of my head, I was like, huh. Like, Usher brings Alicia Keys out, which I get, but I'm just like, man, I feel like Alicia Keys should be bringing Usher out. 
and then it was kind of like this point of debate where <laughs> yeah because alicia keys is amazing like she's such a great yeah piano player for one mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. voice but i mean usher they both just have amazing skill sets mm -hmm. so it's like mm -hmm. either could have brought either out for real that's how i feel about it. yeah i think usher just has i think usher that song that he did with Ludacris and Lil Jon, I think that is just yeah. the biggest song of the millennial era. If I if I had to pick like one, do you think there's any yeah. other song that came out in the mid two thousands that was as big as Yeah? I don't know. I'm thinking about In the Club by Fifty Cent, but Ooh. other than that, yeah, I don't think so. I still think Yeah is yeah, still right. a little bigger. You know yeah. what I mean? I think so too. I think so too. But yeah, those are oh, those yeah. are two defining ones. Now let's get into your style of hip hop here. And before uh, before I show my cards as to not really knowing shit about anything, um, <laughs> I know that within hip hop there has to be subgenres because I know that coming from you know um, growing up with rock and punk and metal, like there's all of these subgenres within within rock that I know about and I can easily distinguish. But on the outside looking in with hip hop and rap, it feels like sometimes the lines are a little bit blurred. And I wanted to know from you first, what would you call your style of hip hop? Mm. Does it have like a specific genre name to it? Or does everybody just subscribe to the hip hop umbrella? So, I mean, hip hop has just become so much over the past 20 years. Like it just went from boom bap to uh, just all mm. these genre bending types of hip hop. And I would think my specific type right now is. I mean, I, I feel like I have a lot of emotional songs, like emotional songs where I'm talking about girls and like how they made me feel, stuff like that. But also I have songs like this other song, Hopscotch, which we're not going to be hearing today, uh, where I'm just screaming. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. And I feel like that can be like a hip hop subgenre if there was like a metal hip hop or something like right. that. Um, you got to understand, I grew up. Like I found Guitar Hero when I was like eight or nine nice. and I fell in love with that shit because I was already into video games and I love guitar. So I just memorized every song on Guitar Hero 1, 2, and 3, like the back of my hand. And that really put me on the rock. Mm. And uh, I kind of went down all those rabbit holes. Mm. And I didn't really find hip hop till high school, which was after that. So I found rock before hip hop, really. Wow, you which found is it weird. in high school. So you're like the Dennis Rodman yeah. of hip hop. Um, <laughs> now I feel like I've, I mean, my rule of thumb when I try to distinguish between rap and hip hop is my rule of thumb is to looking at how much of an emphasis there is on the hook. And most of the mm -hmm. time, like if the song starts and the hook is the first thing that I hear, most of the time mm -hmm. I know I'm listening to a hip hop song and not necessarily yeah. a rap song. Is that a good rule of thumb to have? <laughs> I mean, now I feel like in 2024, there's just literally no rules to it. Like mm. there's just so much that has come out of hip hop that has just meshed with all the other genres that mm. now, like, I don't even know what hip hop looks like. Like, I just feel yeah. like I could put all my tracks into hip hop just because I'm kind of lazy about it, you know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's definitely like an archetype for a song that I learned first is just hook, verse, hook, verse, hook. Mm -hmm. But, uh, later on I started doing verse, hook, verse, hook okay. and verse, I think like, you know, I, and nowadays, like I don't even like the last song I made that I just posted a SoundCloud. Cause sometimes I just make songs and put them on SoundCloud just for the fuck of it. Like right. it was, I made like three different hooks. I made two different hooks and I made the second hook different than the first and third one. And I was just like, why the fuck not? Like, there's no rules. There's no one telling me that every hook has to be the same. Like it's all the same melody, but it's like different words. And uh, yeah, yeah. I just think, I think even, you know, like you're in a band, like you just really have to be creative with the shit and put yourself in, you know, there, there, as I've been listening to your music, especially 
there there's definitely more of an emphasis on the melody which obviously gets a lot of the time at least historically in rap music for me it's less about the melody and more about the cadence and it's more about the lyrical content but it seems like nowadays with hip-hop it's so much more about like having some sort of melody having some sort of thing even within your verses, not even necessarily in the hook, just has something that gets stuck in people's heads. And I don't yeah. even know if that's going to be its own genre of just like earworm hip hop or something like that. I mean, there's some people call it melodic rap, you know, okay. and I, I feel like I can kind of stand behind that, but it's just it's just a really thin line. Like people really mm. are making it their own nowadays and it's hard to kind of group them together. Mm. But I just know that when I grew up, I was in the car seat of the back of my mom's car. She was playing Justin Timberlake, Coldplay, oh God. <laughs> uh, and Usher. You know what I mean? So I was used to the singing, the melody, sure. all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just seems like that's that's the way hip hop from from my perspective that's the way hip hop has been leaning now let's get into one of your tunes here this first tune we're gonna listen to is called chimney check it out everybody well back again anything i feel i'm motherfucking detaching it okay anything i throw i'm motherfucking crashing it okay now what was it you were saying about being passionate okay this paper got me dizzy i've been thrashing feeling like a chimney Sorry, Stratus, sorry, bitch. Grounded like I'm Hindi, so I'm managing. Oh, yeah. But it rarely gets tricky. I can handle it. Yeah. So just give the ops some bandages. I'm the Obi-Wan, I'll treat you like you're Anakin. Okay. Feel adequate, don't know what's gonna make this addict quit. Yeah. I'm passionate about never being a pacifist. Fuck. Don't remember the last time that I was panicking. Oh. Don't remember the last time she made me mad again. All right. She said it three times, still ain't understanding shit. Well, I could put you in the background like an ad lib. She got lights and camera. I got action. Really? Break it down like a fraction. Oh. Pull up in the beam, what's happening? And she knows and she I'm knows. lasting. Really? Strawberry loop for the traction. I'll recycle that hoe, she plastic. I ain't scared of shit till I'm in that casket. Okay. Hey. Well, back again. Yeah. Anything I feel, I'm motherfucking detaching it. Okay. Anything I throw, I'm motherfucking crashing it. Okay. Now what was it you were saying about being passionate? Okay. This paper got me dizzy. I've been thrashing. <laughs> Feeling like a chimney. Sorry, Stratus. Sorry, bitch. Grounded like I'm Hindi. So I'm managing. Oh, yeah. But it really gets tricky. I can handle it. Yeah. If I want to float, I hit the flow. Yeah. And I mean the boast, I'm the goal. Uh, shit you can't control like a fucking PS4. Uh, if you live life, you would probably see us more. Yeah, I got the drive. I'm on a scenic road. Caring about shit. Yeah, that feeling's old. Keeps the heat up. Make your ceiling mold. Bleeding out the cut. I ain't even know. Yeah, I ain't even know. All I see is Rojo with my eyes closed. Taekwondo, black belt on the dojo. Life's different when you look at the whole photo. But what do I know? Well, back again. Anything I feel, I'm motherfucking detaching it. Okay. Anything I throw, I'm motherfucking crashing it. Okay. Now what was it you were saying about being passionate? Okay. This paper got me dizzy. I've been thrashing. Feeling like a chimney. Sorry, Stratus. Sorry, bitch. Grounded like I'm Hindi. So I'm managing. Oh, yeah. But it rarely gets tricky. I can handle it. All right, that tune was called Chimney, and that was off of actually a full-length album called Feelings Over that uh, G. Houston released last year. Now, would you call this more? Would you call that more of like an LP, or is it like a compilation? Because it seems like there was like a lot of tunes that were released as singles, and then they all just manifested into this larger thing. Yeah, definitely a lot of singles on that. Um, I would just call it an LP. And to be honest with you, I don't really know the difference between LP and album. Uh, I don't know if they're the same or different. What do you think? <laughs> they're kind of the same, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Definitely an LP. Uh, 
I don't know. I guess I just want, I just kind of did that for me. Like, mm -hmm. um, I grew up listening to albums front yeah. to back, just like being so mesmerized by how cool it was just as a project. And I was like, I want to do something like that. So I just put it out and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's how that came about. But for right now, I'm just doing singles just cause it's easier marketing wise. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it just that's seems how, like that's about. how it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now let's talk about you writing these tunes for a minute because I was a little bit curious um, and I want to know maybe specifically with that one, do you, with your style of writing, do you hand write things on paper? Do you come up with lyrics in your phone and sing melodies like that? Or are you just walking into the booth like Lil Wayne with like nothing going on and just whatever comes out is what comes out? <laughs> All right, so I don't want to say I'm like Lil Wayne because I still feel like I am miles, kilometers away <laughs> from being like him. Well, yeah. But uh, so I pretty much like filled up notebooks from age 16 to 19 because I wanted to be like as good as a rapper as like Tupac and Biggie, right? Oh, okay. But I ultimately just started making songs in 2020, like right when the pandemic really started, like without writing them. And what I do is I will think of about two, three, four bars and I will say them and then I will punch back in. You know what I mean? Like I will uh, do like a track of like four bars, then I'll make a new track and I'll oh, do another four wow. bars. And I just say that because I don't want people to think that I just go straight through all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because that's what Lil Wayne does. But mm -hmm. uh, I didn't write down any lyrics for that album. Oh, so, you didn't write down any lyrics. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, yeah, if that's if that's the case, do you have the the production and the instrumentation like done already before you're thinking about what the rhythm is of what you're gonna say? Yeah. So my thing is is so I'll have my producer send me the beat, mm. and I'm listening to the beat, and my first thing is I want to come up with. I don't even think about it. I want to come up with a hook. I just want to come up with something that I like. And usually it's just the first bar that's the hardest for me. Cause once I get the first bar, then I can start feeding off of that wow. and then just right. start like snowballing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, I mean, I mean, for this song is, I mean, what I started off with like, well, back again, I remember I recorded this in my closet in my apartment in LA in 2020, 2020. <laughs> I think it was 2020. Yeah. And I mean, it was, it was, uh, yeah, probably bad sound proof, all that. Oh God. And I think the meaning behind it was like, it was just a mood I was in. Cause this is when I was climbing telephone poles for AT&T and oh, I just hated my job and I had a fear of heights, dude. When you so, said that, like, just being from Philadelphia, yeah. when you said climbing telephone poles, I was like, LA won something? I don't remember them winning the championship, but <laughs> you're doing that for nah, a while. Nah, oh, it was a whole so thing. Funny. And if you've seen a grown man fall from a telephone pole right in front of you, if that doesn't scare oh the God. living shit out of you, then I don't know what will. <laughs> I really don't know what will. So, I mean, I definitely surpassed my limits working there and, like, my hours were 4 a.m. to 2 p.m. So I would come oh, home goodness. by like 3 p.m. and just record till like 8 or 9 wow. and then go to sleep and then repeat the next day. So, yeah, I think that was just the first song I did when I got back from work one day. And mm. I was just like, well, back again, everything I feel, I'm motherfucking detaching it. Mm. And by that, I mean, I feel like to really stay in the moment, like stay present. Like, yeah. you can't get too attached to a feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you really have to just move through things and go with the flow. And it's mm -hmm. so hard. It's mm -hmm. so hard. Mm -hmm. But I was like, mm -hmm. if I make a song about it, maybe it'll, it'll help me out with it. So that's my little spiel on that. So how, I guess in that vein, if you look back to, like, maybe the first song you ever put out, right? Let's say maybe it's mm -hmm. Met Her, I think one of the earlier ones and you look back to that song and now you look at you're coming out with new singles right now mm -hmm. what what was maybe the main thing that changed about your your style of writing or your process between your first single and now 
the singles that are coming out for you in 2024? Or do you feel like you've just been grinding out the same way? It's definitely different. I feel like I'm a totally different dude. Like <laughs> when I started, like met her like that time, like I was knee deep in like heartbreak, knee deep in like just isolation. Like uh, I think I had just, cause I studied abroad in Barcelona and wow. that was the first three months of 2020. And then like March 15th came oh, and God. like Trump did his uh, like <laughs> address saying like, we're going to close the borders. And my parents were going crazy. Like, oh, you got to get back here. So All I right. went from like top of the world in my head, Barcelona, like having the time of my life to like coming home and just like being stuck in my room for like a year or two. Right. <laughs> yeah. And um, wow. Yeah, I was just I I just remember I fell out with her and like I didn't expect to be home this early. Like I guess in a way I was kind of like trying to stay away from home. So uh, yeah, I, I was just feeling all those emotions. But right mm. now, compared to then, right now I just feel like I'm just a lot more focused mm. and a lot more just secure with myself. Like, um, uh, excuse me. I think there was a time where I was just trying to fit a certain image, you know, Okay. Uh, like trying to be successful in a way. And I was just seeing what was working for everyone else. And I didn't realize ultimately that was what was making me unhappy. So nowadays, like, like in I alignment really just, and in, in authentic, like it's, it, it can be hard to keep up with something yeah. that isn't really you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just keeping up that image like, is exhausting. And just like this image of like, I do a lot of drugs all day and like I fuck a lot of bitches, I get a lot of money, all that. Oh and it just wasn't true. It wasn't true. <laughs> like I'm a black dude from the suburbs. You know what I mean? So like, I really, and, and like I'm a goofy dude. So like I kind of just learned to just lean into myself and like not be afraid to share things about myself. Okay. Uh, even though I feel like a lot of people might hate me for it. Like, Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, if you put yourself out there all the way, like you're going to get hate, but you're also going to get love and you just got to let right. it happen. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I feel like that's where I'm at right now. And I feel like it's coming off differently to people. So with the yeah. vulnerability. Right. Yeah. Because it mm -hmm. may it might make for less like surface level connections, but the connections that might the well the connections that do hit will be probably like deeper and resonate oh, deeper yeah. with with more vulnerabilities now on a completely other note i just wanted to ask before i forgot what is the 25 club okay okay the 25 <laughs> club is something i came up with so my whole idea of fear like sometimes mm. I'll be afraid to, uh, you know, put out a song where I talked about like some serious stuff about me, or I'll be afraid to say something on social okay. media that I really feel about, you know, just cause like, maybe I'm afraid that maybe my friends will see it and they won't like it. And maybe they won't want to associate with me, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I made the 25 club. Not, it's not like a real thing. I really just went on Spreadshirt and made a hoodie with the 25 club on it. Okay. And because I'm turning 25 in April. Wow. And I was like, what if I really lived every year like I knew it was going to be my last, last year? year. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like my days would be totally different. And I feel like for the past month, I've really been living every day like, okay, when I'm 25, like that might be it, you know? And mm -hmm. when I turn 25, I plan on making it the 26 club. You know what I mean? So, I just think that I have to like scare myself out of fear in mm -hmm. order to like get to where I want to go and like make the connections I want to make with the people out there because I really will just stay in my room and just be scared to just <laughs> get my stuff out there. Like that's yeah, real. Take that's lead. real. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just my little thing in my head that I just did just because I wanted to, you know, and like it's crazy. My mom saw it. And she was just like, oh, my God, what's the 25 Club? And I'm just like, Mom, don't worry about it. It's just thing I'm doing, you know? Like, so, like, I got to deal with that, too. And, sure. yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem explaining myself, you know? Mm. Like, yeah. I'm still going to just do whatever I want, you know? That's what life can be for everyone, you know? But, yeah. I remember for the longest time, I, 
I don't remember why. I think it was because a dream I had. I I thought or I had this deep like inner belief that I wasn't going to live past twenty nine. I don't know where really? it came from, but it was just like this unconscious belief that I had. And throughout all of my 20s, I was just running around like a madman. Like my hair was on fire, Mm -hmm. doing energy drinks, staying up all night, you know, trying to go to college and be in a band and work a job and do, do everything because I had to do it now. It has to happen now. And now I'm sitting here at 31 years old and I'm just like, eh, you know, there's, there's, there's time now. Like I'm on borrowed time and. And it just feels like when when we loosen our grip on life, sometimes we allow for things to happen and allow sure. for the universe to bless us more organically than thinking we have to control everything and we have to make it happen and we have to white knuckle through, you know, everything and yeah. work as hard as possible. Otherwise, we don't deserve shit. It's like, no, nah, you know, just yeah. just let it happen. <laughs> And yeah, definitely. I mean, okay, I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. No, that was it. <laughs> oh, that was it. Oh, that was it. Yeah. And I think I, I, I feel you on a different level because I think what you mean by loosening your grip on life is just like, um, I think every human wants some sort of validation or just some sort of, I mm. guess, love in a different way from like other people, like externally. And I think you really get that when you get right with yourself and you give yourself the validation that nobody mm. else can give you. You know what I mean? So yeah, I've been doing a lot of seen. soul searching recently. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I just, I really have just been focusing on how I feel about myself. Like what I want to do. Like I've been peer pressured into smoking with my friends sure. since I was 18. Just cause like it's weed bro. And it's California bro. Like you <laughs> yes. should do it cause we're doing it bro. Like really Greg, you're not smoking tonight. Like stop being a win- Like I'm at the point where I'm just like, yeah, you guys can use my bong, but I'm not smoking tonight. For real, like mm. I, I'm so much better at like saying no to things that I don't want, and like I'm an I'm, I have asthma, dude. Like <laughs> that does not it doesn't mess well with me. Like not everybody yeah. has asthma, right? And it's just you really got to know what's good for you, mm-hmm. and you really have to stand ten toes on it because yeah. people will try to make you feel bad and impose fears on you because yeah. of fears they have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So get right with yourself. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I yeah, that's that's totally how have to, how you have to be, and it's and it's very hard, I think, for artists because and humans in general just want to be seen. They want to be felt and experienced and heard. Um, and and some people, and with social media now, some people will do anything and everything to have that to be seen, to be heard, to be like no press is bad press type of whatever Mm -hmm. and uh it's it's kind of getting exposed i think a lot of artists need to go through whatever they have to get through to get to that place where they're okay with themselves seeing themselves you know um maybe as many you know whatever happens is is out of our control but what is in our control is how we process our own stuff and yeah and that's that is something that i've been picking up on as i've been listening to these tunes and um i want to get back to that but first i want to play the latest single from g houston which is called too gifted check it out wow i think different you be pessimistic I keep from lane switching Fuck them allegations and them convictions Bitch, I'm too gifted I'm too gifted <laughs> yeah. Get it down Like he taking digits Fuck that beat, just give me cheese One of my favorite dishes Niggas waiting for opportunities Just to fucking miss them I create the opportunity And then I kill it You can film it, realness Don't know the cards I'm dealing Don't know the bribes I'm hitting She's studying to be a mistress She might be good, do as she should Clean me like dirty dishes Can't care less, not my mission I'm focused, I'm too gifted I'm focused, I'm too gifted Get it written, I ain't kidding, ayy All that superstition ain't gonna get me in my feelings, ayy I don't wanna play no games But then she said she wanna play Get it down I don't lose no games, I never play Count on me, six, seven, eight I'm bound to be the Hokage She like me, but I 
I think she lame because she don't wanna be great Addictive personality, so no, you can't sleep where I stand The type to make me fade away I'm trying to fuck and save the day Like, I'm trying to fuck and save the day No disrespect, Caprende I wanna say what I can and can't say Even on a bad day Cause bad days got mad weight Still fast like a Hellcat Reminding myself that Wow I think different You be pessimistic I keep from lane switching Fuck them allegations and them convictions Bitch, I'm too gifted I'm too gifted <laughs> Yeah, Get it down Like he taking digits Fuck that beef Just give me cheese One of my favorite dishes Niggas waiting for opportunities Just to fucking miss them I create the opportunity And then I kill it You can film it Realness Don't know the cards I'm killing Don't know the bribes I'm hitting She's studying to be a mistress She might be good do as she should Clean me like dirty dishes Can't care less, not my mission I'm focused, I'm too gifted Hey, I said I'm focused, I'm too gifted I'm open, I'm too lifted She my private, so I'm a lieutenant Uh, yeah I might lease her like a lieutenant Uh, <laughs> hey I'm focused, baby, uh-huh, uh-huh I'm focused, baby, uh-huh, uh-huh I said I'm focused, I'm too gifted. Nigga. <laughs>All right, that tune was called Too Gifted. And now I want to break this down a little bit because we touched on it a little bit, but this this theme of detachment and detach, and you even released an EP called Detached. And I think yeah. this is something that I hear in many different ways, but I hear it a lot in in hip hop, especially just not being mm-hmm. attached to anything. Like I don't care about money. I'll throw it. I'll throw it away. I'll. I don't care mm-hmm. about anything. You know. Like, um, how do you walk this line of detachment? but also not walling yourself off? Well, first of all, I think it's important to know your intentions with Mm -hmm. the world. Like, are you a person that wants to show love to people? Are you a person that wants the best from people? Are you just trying to get to the top and like step on as many people as possible? Or, Mm -hmm. you know, and I just know with me, like, the best things I get out of music are when I make a really real song or if I have a really great collaboration with mm. somebody that I admire. And, you know, the more I think about it, the more I realize that all this stuff that I all, I always wanted out of music when I started, which is like, you know, all the bad yeah. bitches to like me, you know, all the money, you know, just people to respect me, I guess. All that shit is fake. Like, it's just a fantasy that, like, I've built up in my head over the years. And, you know, there's no such thing as, like, a destination. Like, I always thought that Mm. I would just get somewhere and then just be content. You know what I mean? Like, I would just be like, okay, I made it here. Like, now life is complete. Like, da-da-da. Like, I will always find, like, something that I need to get to. So Mm. now that I look at it like that, like, now I, I just see, like, my vision is just different. Like now I'm just more concerned with meeting people and like rubbing shoulders with like-minded people and like, you know, enhancing people's lives Mm. because the people I look up to enhance my life and made me believe in myself to how I do today. And I just want to do that for people. You know Mm. what I mean? And uh, talking about the detachment, I just feel like you really need to detach from a lot of the beliefs that were instilled in you as a child in order to be free. And I feel like being free is really just acting on your instincts, but also with that intention in mind, like Mm -hmm. that intention of like loving others and like wanting the best for others and like not wanting malice or harm or like infringing on other people's freedoms and shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're not attached to like an image, like uh, you're not attached to like, being looked at a certain way or uh, making certain type of music or, you know, then you're just able to just act however you want in all interactions. And people are actually attracted to that. Yeah. Because people can't do that. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah that's just what I'm, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, I think the term the being intentional about what we do is is so much more powerful because a lot of times not just in hip hop but in general it it seems like uh at least especially here in America in this day and age narcissistic attitudes seem to be getting rewarded in one way or another mm. and glorified and one of the most popular of those narcissistic attitudes that i see in america and a lot of times when i when i travel around here is that attitude of not caring not caring about the person next to you even even here in philly like philly people will just take their trash throw it wherever not give a shit really um mm. yeah and it's there's something to be said just culturally about having that attitude and where that attitude comes from and a lot of people are just not able to process their hurt and i think america mm. has a problem with processing hurt and i think most people that are kind of boasting about not caring are actually people that haven't processed their hurt so they've been walling off and then they kind of brag about being walled off and that's something that I kind of like I struggle with when I listen to hip hop today um, mm -hmm. and when I look at certain artists in hip hop today like there's this really big emphasis on having that kind of attitude and having just kind of like not like just being very carefree which again like you said is like de being detached and attractive but then there's the flip side to it where where it's like well you know what what are you going to care about you know you have this platform and things like that um, and then when you factor in the emphasis on image and how people seem to be fitting like a similar type of image, which is like having a lot of tattoos and things like that. And that's not even just hip hop. That's like in all of modern music, like people. Oh yeah. Oh tatted. yeah. People, sometimes people don't even believe that I'm not in a band because I don't have any tattoos. Like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's such a, it's such a, it's that's such crazy. a thing. It's such a thing now, but like. Where do you navigate at least with with hip hop and how and how you fit in? Do you, are you just really trying to focus on like one day at a time, one song at a time, one, you know, verse at a time and just focus on what you're doing? Or are you looking over the fence a little bit at as to what the industry does and and how mm. how does that affect you today? Well, I feel like I have to be realistic and keep an eye on what the industry is doing because okay. I do have a goal of being financially successful enough. So I have more resources to make better music mm. um, and create more art and share it and give back uh, to people that were, you know, like me and didn't know how to get started. Cause I, I was a producer first before I started recording music for about two, three wow. years. And um, I remember not knowing how to get started. Like I bought a beat pad and, you know, just watching videos on YouTube and it was just really hard. Yeah. And I just wanted to create something for new producers so they can just go through like a basics, like a really easy, understandable type thing. Uh, maybe sure. like a mentor program or something. I don't know. Yeah. But like just so that they can like get enough of the basics so they can just start making their own shit. Yeah. And uh, just not have to go through all those years of me trying to figure it out. And right. I think with hip hop, just like the idea of people flaunting about how they don't care. I look at a person and I see how they're acting Mm -hmm. I immediately go, I, I, I mean, I see their surface level actions, whether how bad they are, you know what I mean? And I really just try to figure out like how they grew up, where they grew up, wow. what that was like, yeah, what's how behind? their parents treated it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're all born babies. 
that just drool <laughs> and cry. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like there's Everything no evil learned. babies out there. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I can't just look at a person and be like, you're a horrible human being. You deserve everything that's coming to you. Da, 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 da. I mean, you could be a grown ass <laughs> man that made some horrible decisions, but what right. in your mind made you feel like you could do that? Oh shit. He was abused as a child. Da, 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 right. da. Like yeah. I wasn't abused as a child sexually or however. And I know a lot of people were, and that does something to a sure. person. Yeah. Kind of like how drugs can chemically alter a person's mind. And sure. like, it's kind of out of your control at a point. So, I mean, there's a level of empathy and understanding that you need to have with people in order to get to some type of solution. And if you don't do that, then you're really just egging mm. the behavior on. Mm. You're not really fixing anything. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, this could go as deep as, you know, like pedophiles and shit like like the worst thing that people think of you know okay. like i think that there's there's a lot of things that we just put people in boxes for and we don't look at the root problem and sure. we don't try to fix the root problem because maybe maybe in reality we don't actually want to and if we don't actually want to then say that but i know i want to look at every person i meet and say i see you Mm. like there were you had some dark days like you were not always like this you know what i mean and i think that's just a big part of my message that mm. you know i i spent years just not being seen and like just trying to be something i'm not just so i was seen and i just realized you know like we're all hurt we, we all have been through some things that have just that we didn't like mm. you know and i just think it's important to see that and recognize that in a world where we don't do that and we just, you know, throw people in boxes. Yeah, and judge. And I know that hip hop, yeah, and judge. And I know that hip hop is predominantly black. And I know that, you know, black communities are, you know, majority of black communities are not the best places to be, the best places to grow up. Mm. And, you know, you can see why, like, our culture has just skyrocketed to the top. Because mm. pressure really makes diamonds mm -hmm. and, you know, it creates these type of people that flaunt that they don't care because of all of the pain wow. that they went mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. and nobody gave a shit. Nobody yeah. gave a shit. So they finally get on and they're just like, oh, you want me to care about all these people? Yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, at least I'm focused on the root problem, you know? So, yeah, yeah. that's how. I wow. And that being said, we have a single, which is called Leader, Promptly, which I found I found to be a really cool name for, for a single. That's going to be out March 8th from you. And this last yes, tune that we're going to hear is called Turn Off, which is going to be available on the 23rd of February. So we're going to have a pre-save link in the description for that. But lastly, G Houston, what can you tell us about this tune turn off that we're about to hear? All right. Well, turn off. I feel like really promotes individuality. Um, kind of like a lot of the stuff I was talking about, just like, the beliefs that were instilled in us from a younger age, just like mm. how we were, how we were uh, given knowledge in schools and how that's kind of carried on into like our lives. Like, I feel like me being 24, like I'm in the most ambiguous situation of my life ever because I'm ending my childhood and I'm starting adulthood when everybody's just like, Oh, you need to get a job. You need to figure your shit out. Da, 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 da. And I mean, you know that like, ages 18 to like basically 30 men like <laughs> we're looked at as like you know you're not valuable if you can't mm. do anything for me you know like you're you're not mm. shit until you make something of yourself it's different for women mm. because women can look great and like you know be sought after but guys mm. actually have to go out and make something of themselves and a lot of them can't because we're so used to following directions and if you do that for like the first 18 years of your life in school, you're not going to be able to think for yourself. You're mm -hmm. not going to be able to think for yourself and do things that you actually want to do and actually contribute to the society you're in. 
the way that you really can best, I feel like. So I feel like turn off mm. is really just an ode to take a step back from your present situation and just really look at who you are and your individual needs that are outside of your best friends, outside of your family. Like you don't have to be attached to everyone. You got to realize that you're an individual that likes certain things and there's no combination of you anywhere else in the world and there never will be again. Mm. And I don't think people realize that. People don't realize it. Mm. So that's the bigger mm. picture behind this song. But uh, yeah, it, it's kind of a party song, I feel like. I think it's pretty dope. <laughs> that shit would be tight. All right, everybody. Well, this last tune is called Turn Off. It's going to be available everywhere February t- uh, 23rd. P- Pre save link will be in the description. Uh, rip on, everybody. Smoke until both my lungs turn off. She say it's a turn off. Yeah. I said take your shirt off. Yeah. We could fuck some hurt off. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Girl, I ain't stupid or cupid. Uh-huh. I never had to make you do it. Uh-huh. You love when I rub your bruises, yeah. bruises. Yeah. Hey. I'm coughing and causing pollution. Uh-huh. I'm wondering the cause of G Houston. It's my life, I didn't choose okay. it. Okay. Hey. Okay. I heard the only way is through it. Uh-huh. So I know that I'm going through uh-huh. it. And trust I ain't no loser, loser. She fell for me through the computer. When I saw her, I forgot I knew her. It's be chase, I gotta lose her. About to buy a Uber. Just watch how I maneuver, or else I'm lying to her. But I'm done lying, trust me. Been too busy hustling. Just gotta skip the assumptions, put fun in, stop rushing it. Cause niggas out here get lucky. My brain always stuck on something, so I ain't looking forward to nothing. At all. I need that raw, gotta focus, I've been dealing with my withdrawals, that's loves and drugs involved, uh, wanted to withdraw my draws, so I can put my balls in a jaw, yeah, wanted to withdraw my draws, so I can put my balls in a jaw, we do it all night long, hey, yeah, come on, withdraw my draws, wanna put my balls in a jaw, so we can smoke until both my lungs turn off, she say it's a turn off, I said take your shirt off, we could fuck some hurt off. Stupid or Cupid, I never had to make you do it. You love when I rub your bruises, bruises. Hey. I'm coughing and causing pollution. I'm wondering the cause of G Houston. It's my life, I didn't choose it. Hey. I heard the only way is through it, so I know that I'm going through it. And trust, I ain't no loser, loser. Motherfucker, I'm a winner. Watch me lose control like scissor. We got some coding memories, then the winner got mixed that ass with a little self center. Don't you remember? In the backseat, backtracking from reality together. There was never forever, it's just severed. Separation had me smoking like a kettle. Then I went rebel. Five years been unsettled, and I'm still here, I need a medal. She loves me, not ran out of pedals. So I picked them up, started smoking extendals. Fuck it, won't take my foot off the pedal. Pedal, the Nissan plate was embezzled. Yellow, grew up kind of far from the ghetto, but I'm way too black to sit back and relax. Loot and relapse, pharmaceutical tax. Known as the cool dude with booze in the back. Her eyes subtract, I'm not good at love. I'm not like you niggas, I could give a fuck. When hell comes back, I'll never run. Till then, I'll smoke until both my lungs turn off. 